Data nerds, is GPT-4 a good data analyst? Well, that's what this research paper right here aimed to find out. Not only was it faster when compared against human data analysts, but it was also a heck of a lot cheaper, especially when compared to a senior data analyst. However, how did it actually perform in the analysis portion? Well, we have the results for that as well, and we'll dive into them more deeply in a bit. Now, the purpose of this study, and frankly, why I'm even making this video, is not for you to cause anxiety and be like, Oh, little chat GPT is gonna take my job. Instead, I'm looking to explore how to use things like large language models and bots in order to speed up my process as a data analyst. And that's exactly what this study is trying to do as well by setting up a framework for that. So let's dive into what this study found. And then it starts with this framework, building GPT-4 as a data analyst. But I'll be honest, what this thing's a little complex, so we're gonna start even simpler than that. So there are three major job scopes of a data analyst. First is data collection. And this involves using complicated AF diagrams in order to identify what information we need to extract out. This involves using SQL to connect to a database in order to extract out those insights. Now, once we have those insights, next up is data visualization, which we're using to create graphs and charts in order to visualize those insights. Now, there's a whole host of options that you can use for this, all the way from Power BI to Excel. But since GPT-4 is a master at Python, it's gonna be using this. Now, after generating the insights and visualization, it's time to move into the final step of analysis, which involves extracting out the major insights into a bullet-like format, so that way we can take action with the data. So the authors of this paper proposed those three major scopes in order to focus on for this, in order to evaluate not only the humans of this, but also GPT-4. So back to this complicated ass diagram on how they were gonna use GPT-4 for this. The first prompt to the GPT-4 consisted of business question along with the database connect to and its associated schema. In it was given the prompt, write Python code to select relevant data and draw the chart. Please save the plot to figure.pdf and save the label and values shown in the graph to data.txt. So the research team open sourced all their code for this and I was able to go through and validate a lot of the questions and insights they found from this. They had a list of over a thousand questions they used in order to analyze the performance of both GPT-4 and the real data analysts. And you may be like, Luke, huh? what data did they actually run these questions on? Well, that's actually in another open source repository, which they have benchmarks for evaluating natural language texts in order to generate visualizations. And the databases in this cover over 105 domains supporting seven common types of visualizations. Now I downloaded all these different data sets as well, and they include everything from something like apartment rentals to even something like Yelp reviews. So back to that prompt, we're using that list of a thousand different questions questions in order to provide this to the model, along with providing it the SQL schema, which shows all the different tables and data types within this database, and finally the database itself. So that's a lot to unpack. So let's actually run this code to show what actually this model is going to be doing, and I'll show the data analyst did. Inside my terminal, I just run demo underscore main dot pi. The first thing it asks is to choose the database file to read. So I'll provide this one on SQLite. The next it asks, provide the schema file to read. So I provide this. Now next is the question provide, and this one is specific to this data set. Specifically asked, what is the number of bookings starting date of the apartments with more than two bedrooms for each weekday? draw a bar chart. So this starts by calling the GPT-4 API in order to do this. So it finished this step in 18 seconds. Let's see the results. First is the figure it generated for this, conveniently named figure.pdf. And in it, it looks like it correctly plotted the number of bookings per day. Now, along with this bar chart, it also exported the data as a text file getting all the different numerical results for this. So going back to that framework, we just completed the first part in our analysis. We provided GPT-4 a question. It then found the relevant table inside of a database, queried it, and provided the results in a data.txt file and a figure.pdf file. So this captures not only our data collection, but also visualization. We now need to move into the final part of analyzing. If you notice from that framework, we only provide the input of that data.txt file and not the figure.pdf. Now this study didn't have access to GPT-4's visual capabilities at the time, which nowadays I can do something like feed ChatGPT, which is using GPT-4, an image of a graph and it will provide insights of this. Instead, they just resulted to providing the text input to these models, which is frankly good enough. Anyway, getting back into our code, let's get into actually executing the final portion of this Python code of analyzing the data. Now for this, it asks, would you like to use online information to generate analysis and insights? Back in that framework, we can see that there's an optional input to allow external knowledge. 
Specifically, they have the ability to use Google search with this model. Now they included this because an experienced data analyst is easily linked with one's background knowledge. This is known as domain knowledge and it's commonly cited as one of the faults of GPT-4 and why it can't take our jobs is because it doesn't have this type of knowledge. Anyway, the authors of this cited to mimic a human data analyst better in our framework, we add an option of using Google Search API to extract real-time online information when generating data analysis. So basically this online information provided to the model provides domain knowledge. So back in our code, I'll just type yes to allow to use this. So the model's programmed to output wow. five different insights for this. If we go back to our original figure, we can see that Monday and Saturday are the two most popular days. And in the fourth bullet point, it confirms this, suggesting that the start of the week, Monday, and the weekend, Saturday, are the most popular times for booking these apartments. Now remember that the model did have access to the internet in order to query background information, but looking through the results it provided, none of it really had that additional context that it researched. When I've dug into the research paper further, they basically concluded that online research wasn't really necessary for this data set. As they put it, the analysis depends on the data data stored in the database and rarely requires additional knowledge. It's one of the limitations of this benchmark test. So we talked about this framework used by GPT-4 along with the three major scopes of a data analyst, but how the heck did this model actually perform against human data analysts? And which human data analysts did it perform against? Well, there were five data analysts total, two senior, two junior and one intern. The seniors had over five years of experience, juniors around two years, and the intern was, well, interning. Now, I'm a little concerned with the number of data analysts they used for this study. I feel like five is entirely too little. They should have actually consulted with more data analysts for this. However, they cite, since hiring a human data analyst is very expensive, we can only find a few data analysts and ask them to do a few samples. Basically, they only had enough budget to hire five data analysts, which, it's actually a real world scenario that companies run into all the time. And I feel that they may be actually taking the GPT route over human data analyst because of this. All right, getting off my soapbox. The first thing I wanna look at is a comparison of the cost between these analysts and also GPT-4. Now they've provided this table for a cost analysis, but what I thought it was hard AF to read. So I provided this statistic from the study in order to back calculate what the different costs are for the analysts. Specifically, it's cited that the cost of GPT-4 is approximately 2.5% of the cost of the intern, 0.71% of the cost of the junior data analyst, and 0.45% of the cost of the senior data analyst, which ChatGPT provided this visualization on cost per instance. So this calculates based on the time and the salary of a data analyst, how much it costs to answer a given question. So the senior is the most expensive oh. at $11, Mom. junior around $7, and what? intern at $2. GPT-4 comes in at a whopping five cents per instance. That's just crazy to me how cheap this is in comparison. So let's actually move into how it performed in the analysis. For this, it had human evaluators analyze not only the final figure it provided, but also those five different bullet points it provided. For the figure, it analyzed things like correctness, whether it selected the correct chart type, the aesthetics, and the time. For the analysis, it did a similar evaluation looking at correctness, complexity, alignment, fluency, and also time. In each one of these rows, we're comparing the human data analyst to GPT-4 based on a number of different samples. Now, first thing I wanna look at is time. Once again, I use ChatGPT to plot this. And for GPT-4, I just averaged all the different results because they had around the same value of approximately a minute to generate the visualizations. For both the intern and junior, they were about the same and taking more than 10 minutes, where the senior data analyst took only about eight minutes. So GPT-4 is crushing these analysts on not only cost, but also time. When we look at the time of the data analysis portion, they follow a similar trend. Well, except for that intern, that looks like it's double as fast as the senior and junior data analyst. That doesn't make sense. So what about the accuracy and validity of those results when actually compared to the human data analyst? Well, as stated, this comes in a multitude of columns and there was no single metric that actually combined this all together. However, analyzing this roughly, we can see that the yeah. senior data analyst outperforms GPT-4 on both the figure and data analysis, whereas the junior and intern data analyst perform similar, if not worse than GPT-4 for both of these tests. Now there is one major flaw that the authors of this called out in performing this analysis. And this has to do with the practicality of those thousand questions posed to GPT-4 and the data analysts. These questions are very specific in what they're asking. Look at the first one. 
show all the buildings along with the number of faculty members the buildings have, plot them as a bar chart, show in descending order by the total number. I can say working as a data analyst that my boss has never come to me and provided that detailed of a request. So in order to satisfy this in this question, they actually came up with more general questions to ask, leaving them more open-ended for interpretation on what they should be performing for the analysis and final results. In this case, they used the data set to evaluate which one they should be accepting and then compared it across the junior data analyst, senior data analyst, and GPT-4 data analyst. Now they did this across five practical questions and then ranked them high to low where three is the highest score or the winner and one is the lowest. Unfortunately, that junior data analyst was in last place every time. And then the senior data analyst and GPT-4 was back and forth. Now this is only five questions. And once again, we're only using five data analysts. So this study is honestly, from my perspective, very limited in the analysis that I performed. And I think there's a lot more that we need to do in this area. And that's what the final conclusions of this research paper come to stating our results and analysis show that GPT-4 can outperform an intern data analyst or a junior data analyst and can achieve comparable performance to a senior data analyst. But further studies are needed before concluding that GPT-4 can replace data analysts. And they end with this, the purpose of this work is not to replace the data analyst role or to create anxiety. Instead, we would like to explore the potential of GPT-4 to aid human data analysts in more efficient working. And that's what I plan to be continuing to do on this channel and exploring how to use AI more more to speed up my workflow in data analytics and spend more time touching grass. All right, as always, got value out of this video, smash that like button. And if you'd like to learn how I use ChatGPT in my workflow, check out this video right here. With that, see you in the next one.